Okay, um, this is gonna be another favorite forever deck video of mine. Uh, you can you see three decks in front of me, so this is kind of weird, maybe, but I, I'm, I'm not gonna film separate videos for all of them. Matter of fact, I'm probably gonna keep it short and simple as it is, because two of them are basically the same, one of them is something different, um, but I can't act like these decks weren't super instrumental in my card reading journey. Uh, the threads, you can kind of see it already, maybe. Bloop, 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 the threads of fate. The threads of fate, Oracle. Let me get these other two bitches out of the way. This is where it all started for them. Uh, this is where it started for me, but I'm gonna start with this one regardless. Um, this version of this deck is now out of print. I think it is, you know, uh, such a gorgeous version um, that, you know, I find it, I always find it weird to have like multiple versions of a deck, but look at those backs too. I just can't like not love this. Um, what's nice about this version of this deck is that even if you photograph it like this in a flat lay and the, the shimmery sigil doesn't show, because that can be a pain in the ass with decks like these. You know, they're gorgeous to look at and play with, but they don't do that well in picks. You still have a really strong photograph, photo manipulation visual to sort of look at. So I find that really interesting and really cool. This is... Uh, one of my favorite decks. So I didn't get this. I got the Shadow Edition because this was long was long since out of print. However, um, even with that Shadow Edition, I just completely fell in love with the fact that apparently this is what a card deck could look like. I was completely like blown away. Like we can have this this soft sensation on the cards. We can have this gorgeous foiling. We can have these gorgeous edges that don't cut me in my fingers. I mean, the sole reason why my deck has this card finish, my own tarot deck, and that matte antique gilding is because of this. But that was just aesthetics. And I was still very insecure when I got this, so I probably shouldn't have been getting this deck in the first place. Um, but, you know, I was like, I paid a lot of money for this. So I want to, you know, make this work. I want to make this click. And boy, did it do that. Um, you can use this deck fine as is. Uh, some of the keen birds may not speak as much to everyone. Uh, I this This literally is like, whenever I pull this deck out, it's like uh, wearing an old coat Funny, I actually pulled this card for myself earlier today. Um, and, you know, I can just read with it. I actually, like, would probably... Obviously, I would bring my own tarot deck, but I would probably take either one, I don't care, either one of the Threads of Fate oracles if I could only have one deck out of my entire collection. Um... You know, it, it is a, a great deck to just use straight up out of the box without tuning into any of the sigil work, photograph work, keyword work, guidebook. Uh, when you do open up to that guidebook, it becomes even more glorious because in that guidebook, you will find lovely guidance on, um, you know, for all, there are like 22 archetypal cards that kind of have a major arcana vibe. Um, that basically just are the Major Arcana. Those don't have what I'm about to say, but um, most of the other cards are sort of divided by suits. And then they, those have, um, so we get water, fire, earth. So it's sort of tarot structured a little bit, but not in a way where it feels lazy or annoying or dumb. Uh, so we get earth, fire, water, air, and every earth, fire, water, air card gets a plant, an animal, and a crystal that you can work with next to superbly written guidance. This is one of the sigils that was changed for the, or one of the line works that was changed for the subsequent editions. And I find that I prefer a lot of the line work in here, 
but I think there was sort of a budget issue where sometimes the line work was black and sometimes it was gold. It's not a misprint, that's just the way it was. But I just really, 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 like I can't, let me just, let me just try to show you because a lot of people, um, especially the, the, the sort of crowd that is more into the artsy, folksy, shamanic side of things. For example, Martin, I know Martin won't care um, uh, if I, if I talk about him like this because he very much loves his folksy decks. And he's not really like this, but he has something against most of these gold foil decks because very often it is style over substance, um, which we'll get to in a minute. But for some reason with this deck, there's so much substance and I wish more people will be open up to that. Um, for example, this card, Take Risk, look. We get this gorgeous imagery of this goat atop this mountain, like, um, take fucking risks. Come on, don't be a don't be a dumb ass bitch. Take fucking risks. Get out there into the world. It's very direct. Um, but even for a more archetypal card, like like this one, the warrior. You know, look at that fabulous, fabulous sword. Uh, you know, you gotta embody that like fiery energy. You know, and it has gorgeous keywords. Or even this sort of ridiculous cat. Look, can you see it? Yes. You know, recl reclaim that fire within. Take that fucking risk, be that warrior. Really great, like this deck just speaks my language. I don't know why, uh, but what I was going for was a lot of these people that are more into these sort of hand-drawn, um, you know, non-gold foil decks, some of them will say there is no substance here. And I beg to differ. So that was the, the, the first edition. Um, the edition that came out after that was the Shadow Edition, which I was able to buy from uh, House of Form Lab in the Netherlands. Uh, you can probably still see my reading from this morning. Look, it's like way darker. And you know, overall, this is a more sleek package. Your guidebook was made so it would fit into a smaller box. Um, you know, and it, it, I have to say, like even the sigil line work, is a little bit more impressive here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the annoying thing is their stuff is like expensive, you know, and it has always been expensive, but is getting even more and more expensive nowadays. And, you know, it's, it's that's completely up to them. That's completely fine. You know, they can do whatever the hell they want. Um, but they used to have like some wholesalers, but they sort of stopped doing that because they don't want that anymore. Uh-uh. We don't want that. We want to like do everything ourselves. So if I want anything by them now, uh, I have to order it all the way from the United States. And it basically just means that I'm fucked because uh, I'll have to pay like 20 to $30 on top of the already pretty steep retail price. So yeah, it's just something that I am um, not going to do anymore, but I am still really enjoying this deck and uh, especially this shadowy version too. Um, this one is kind of a bitch to photograph because there is photo stuff going on, but it's so dark that you can't really see it in a flat lay. So in a flat lay without perfect lighting, this will just look like a shadowy blob with perfect lighting. It will look gorgeous, but it's like, it's, it's a stunning deck. Uh, I don't get like, I, I don't get different readings from this deck to the first edition at all. The, the threads of fake gals themselves are like, no, but you know, this has like a way more dark voice. Meh, no. Uh, it's the same deck, same guy book, nothing, no differences uh, content wise between those editions. Their tarot, obviously for me, was next on the list uh, to get because I sort of expected that greatness. And I got the, I got a version that looked a little bit more like their first edition Oracle deck. And when I got that, that was just a complete stinker to me. So I ended up getting this version from Mixtress Ray uh, later, you know, I because I had rehomed that first version because that had a lot of photo shit in the background, uh, which made the, the pips look kind of dumb. Uh, I don't know why, and, and, and some of the major designs as well. 
it made it look kind of dumb. And once I saw, and then I saw Mixtress Ray review this, and she didn't like it per se. And I saw like, wow, in this edition where it's just the line work on a black background, all of a sudden I do like these cards and these designs. So I have to say though, this is a really like a favorite tarot deck. I love it. I really do. I really do like this a lot. Uh, it, it's, it, it doesn't compare in greatness to the Oracle, Oracle's Oracle. Uh, if you're, if you were thinking about like getting either one of their decks, whatever, but the ones I'm showing you right now, uh, don't think, you know, don't think like many others would like, let's get the tarot because Oracle cards are dumb and not deep. So I'm going to get the tarot. Uh, I feel like this is just a pretty design pip style deck, you know, it looks good. It looks good. Um, you know, it's very hashtag TikTok aesthetic. It's very hashtag girl boss, uh, mystic girl boss aesthetic. Nothing wrong with that either. Um, it's just that, um, you know, the, the Oracle has way more to offer. You're going to get a lot more out of it. And it's kind of structured like a tarot deck anyway. So, uh, but I have to say, once again, I'm, I'm one of those people that hates, 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 hates different editions of decks. And I have to say, the difference between this and the more like colorful photo-y background version of this, the di difference between those two is like day and night. I do love, I do love this. I, I appreciate also the effort to make the cards gender neutral. I don't really care about that shit, but I know a lot of people do. Um, and I just, I got this from for free from Mixer's Ray. Uh, wow. Um, you know, that's so amazing. I'm going to treat her back one day. Uh, but, you know, I just, I, I like, I like this a lot. I love the Seeker of Wands. I love this. I love him. I want that hat. Um, you know, like it's, it's almost like the designs come to life a little bit more, literally have a little bit more depth, even though this is less than the edition I originally had. It's just that, you know, let me show you some, some of the things that do like, like this is super cute, like really ornate design on the hat and then the little droplets down there and it gives dimension. This is very much, you know, very blocky, very big blocks of, um, what am I doing here? Very big blocks of foil. So it automatically looks a little bit, I don't know, weird and dumb. Um, but overall, really, really like this. Wanted to show it. Um, is it necessarily part of my like favorite, favorite decks ever? No, but I do really like this tarot deck now, whereas I really used to hate it. I actually like how dumb I even sent this to them. Uh, I, I literally said, I really expected more from your tarot deck. And they were like, well, you know, they were actually good sports about it. And they were like, that's fine. Uh, you know, uh, everyone can like what they like. Uh, what I kind of disagree with, though, is that, you know, there are lots of people out there willing to do wholesale for them and they kind of want to keep everything in their own pocket, which, you know, you are sort of alienating every other continent except for the, the one you're living on. Uh, but maybe that's kind of what they want. It's their business. It's their decision to make. But really good quality decks. Really good. I'm not really sure about their, like, latest efforts which have been more text-based or lenticular. I don't care about that shit at all. I almost backed the Kickstarter, but then I backed out. But to me, like, this is where it's at. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, another, like, main, like, staple in my collection, uh, the Oracle and a little bit of the Tarot. Anyways, thanks for watching, and bye, bitches.